My name is Dan Havens. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales for Ormuco, and today my partner in crime is Jason Krillich. We will be doing an overview of the company and we'll do a, a bit of a demo. Um, I want to thank the people that came yesterday. We got a huge turnout. Uh, our booth happens to be about 17 paces to, the, to your left over here. And uh, we uh, were able to create a couple of strategic relationships out of the conversations yesterday. So whoever says that the, uh, whoever said uh, the uh, OpenStack Summit couldn't provide immediate ROI was mistaken. So appreciate that. We're hoping for similar traction today. So feel free to come on out. The agenda today is going to look a little bit. We're going to go history, challenges, economics, and a demo. Now. I know I sound a little bit like an infomercial, and uh, yesterday I got some feedback on that. I, I'm not doing the sham wow here, but I do typically speak at about 400 words a minute, so I apologize in advance. But we are very excited about what we have. I do feel a little bit like we have lightning in a bottle. Yes, I do have sales in my title, so I'll apologize for all of that, but there's actually real code behind this. This does prove a real solution out in the field, and again, we're incredibly excited about it. Some history on the company. We've been around for a while. So 2008, we actually started out as a telco. In 2011, we transitioned into a managed service provider with our specialty being gaming. So anybody in the crowd that has kids with an Xbox or you play an Xbox, it's a very good chance that you're in one of our data centers playing. This cut our teeth in a space with a hugely demanding customer base. In 2013, we decided to go into the actual operating system we were using and make that our product. So we don't think of ourselves now as a managed service provider. We are a software company. Our goal here is to go to managed service providers or enterprises, anybody that is trying to address this cloud problem, and give them a solution they can turn on this year. And a matter of fact, give them a solution they can turn on next month and either make money or try to reel back in some of the um, some of the loss of control that we've seen the public clouds cause today. We have a premier turnkey solution and I'm going to use the word hybrid. I'll define the cloud as we see it because I think if you went to every booth here you'd get a slightly different taste. The perspective that I'm coming from is cloud is not a destination. It is a delivery model. People do not put their data in Amazon because they want it to sit in Seattle. They go to Amazon because it's easy because it's right now. It's elastic. I can pay as I go. When my project's done, I can turn it off. That's the concept of cloud. It sounds glorious, but it's not easy to do. The challenge is most of the workloads in enterprise today cannot go to the public cloud. So we cut our teeth. We've made a great living by going around to the countries around the world and selling to territories that are underserved by the bigs. But here in America, the money is made on the enterprise side where it can't leave and go to that public cloud. That's where everybody in this room comes in trying to build a foundation. We've spent four million man hours building our product on top of OpenStack to make a truly turnkey, easy to use, Azure stack-like, AWS stack-like, whatever metaphor you want to use, solution that you can turn on and either monetize, capturing your customers, or give your employees a glorious experience. The current challenges, hybrid. Now, this too is an abused term in our space. The company that probably has done the best job of capturing this message, I dare I say in this building, is Microsoft. Microsoft has this Azure thing. It's, it's not cheap, but it's certainly a public cloud. They have also had the concept coming of Azure Stack which is code for, I have to address inside the data center. What can't leave the cage? What can't leave, and in some cases, what can't leave the country? Now you might say, as a sales guy, why on earth would you bring up a competitor in your slide? In our space, competition helps. Actually, we get a lot of mileage off of just that Azure Stack-like message. Uh, I will always argue that without a competitor, you don't really have a space. I used the term yesterday, but I'll use it again. Uh, there is no Luke Skywalker without a Darth Vader. Without Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker would be nothing more than a hot shot rocket jib jockey in white jammies who is working his sister. So I, uh, I uh, also would argue that there is, uh, 
There is no Popeye without a Brutus. Without Brutus, Popeye would be nothing more than a vegetarian sailor who likes anorexic chicks. But anyway, I, I digress. We all need our competition and we have, we have uh, Azure Stack for that. 451, the research. Now I can go through all the words on this slide, but 66, 64, 57, no matter who you use, um, we, we've had some McKinsey studies too, no matter who you use, there is a large number of enterprise class workloads that have to go somewhere and be t and treated in the new service model, and that is private cloud. Sometimes that can be even considered a poisonous word, but delivered in that model. You'll see it coming now, many of these companies are going to stand it up themselves or they're going to look to you, whether you're a managed service provider. Here's what we have found out in the field. If you're a reseller and you are selling boxes and software, oftentimes your customer's raising their hand and saying, I don't want a box this time. I want this workload taken care of. I want it to go somewhere. Resellers are finding very quickly that they can resell this appliance that we have so that that customer can stand up the cloud of their own. Now the importance is our economics, and I'll talk about that in a second. First off, the economics of doing this. Many people have tried to write this. This is not an easy lift. It's big capex, it's a lot of time. Uh, unless this is gonna be your core business, I would urge against it. Most often people figure out sooner than later, be really good at what you do and partner the difference. If you're a really good hoster, stay hoster. If you're really good at software, stay in software. If you try to do both, most companies don't do quite so well in that space. We are that software vendor. We do not host this. I do not wanna host this and compete with you. If you're in the enterprise, I want to provide this turnkey. My models are set up in a cloud model. I don't get paid, my teams don't get paid until you're using it and getting full value or making money on the system. Now many hosters, even some internal IT departments, are rifling workloads out to Azure and AWS. If you're a managed service provider and you're sending those out, you have to do that because your customers are saying, hey, I, I'm gonna need this. And if you say no to it, you may lose some of the workloads that you're managing old school, some of the old VMware workloads and so forth. The problem is you're sending your customer down the street. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't gonna be customers of yours that are gonna say, I must have this go to AWS. But if you have an alternative tomorrow morning with your brand on it that is half the price and in the privacy of your own cage, and it also has the sex appeal because a lot of executives wanna hear these words, runs with containers and on OpenStack. That's a ringer. So you get to check a very large box there. The fun part is below. VMware's everywhere, we see it everywhere. When you have this running and it becomes a safe place, we normally come in under the guise of cloud. People want the facelift and they want cloud. But once we're there, the pure economics of our platform being chosen on OpenStack, we start to see companies start to migrate those VM workloads. And we can actually see 35% capture, meaning a 35% discount. So that either goes in a managed service provider's pocket or it becomes more value back to the customer. But bottom line is that's very compelling. Why do those migrations not happen quicker? Because OpenStack's a little scary. I've heard bad things. It's a little wobbly. It's a little, when it's running live in the data center and you've moved your second workload over, greed takes over. The entire enterprise takes over. By the way, our managed hoster all of a sudden goes into a migration practice and they've created a, yet another revenue stream from that. Again, once it appears safe, those savings become overwhelming. Ormoco, turnkey, fully managed. We manage it up to the operation layer. The savings, it's automated. Again, I'm just gonna use the Azure-like or AWS-like. If you've used either one, it is the same type of experience, except from the privacy of a cage. And oh, by the way, just because we pitch private, we love private because we're the only ones that do that well, but that does not mean you can't go public. It does not mean you can't go hybrid. We have many companies that are bursting into a public version of this exact same control. Here are the economics. Straight out of the gate, quantity one. OpenStack gives us an enormous advantage, but right out of the gate, quantity one, I can be nearly 50% cheaper than an AWS or an Azure. And again, if you're just doing a public and there are countries that can stand up a public cloud and they're making a killing at this, I would argue if you're in the United States, that game has probably been won, but going after the private workloads. 
That is the next decade. That's what we're challenged with. When you can come in with those economics and say the words privacy of your own cage, you have a story that is very difficult to resist. Now, I've been all words, most sales guys are. I wanna show you the product. Anybody that's interested would love to talk to you in more detail over at the booth and we can point you to any one of our public customers where you can actually go use this system live and don't have to take a word for it. Last note, hoping to get a couple of you to come over, anybody whose feet are being put to sleep by your current employer, we're hiring. We're growing leaps and bounds. We're actually hiring worldwide and we love open stackers. So at a minimum, come by, shake our hand, introduce yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, my name is Jason Krillich, and I'm gonna walk you through um, our UI here. What you're seeing is our partners and what we've built. And basically what we've built is a single sign-on, multi-cloud solution. This is my data center in London, multi-language. This solution is allowing me to switch between data centers with a single UI. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm gonna switch from London to jump to another cloud, and now I'm uh, jumped in another cloud here up in Montreal. So the important thing here to understand is that our challenge is, is always with billing. Uh, the partners that we come to, they have a challenge with their public cloud billing. We create a private cloud billing solution that we build by project. When you think about projects in a way that are showing you here, I take these projects and I can manage them. I can manage these projects and I can assign users with different admin privileges along with all of the nodes that I have that you see here are putting me in a place where I can build this particular project right now. So I dive in here. I want to manage this project. I can invite people to it. And then of course, I can take the personas and the privileges and assign them to a team. So once that team has that project, I can get to a point where I can start to manage it and manage its billing cycle or metering. So if you're a service provider, that's gonna be a bill that you provide. Or if you're an enterprise company, that's metering. So what you're seeing here is all the software-defined network, routers, security, uh, all the things that we do, including object storage that you're gonna see here, which is powered by Ceph. We can create block storage and object storage. And right now, I'm in the middle of making one right now. So when you think about the services that you want to provide as a service provider, you start thinking about the templates that you want to make with this platform. Or if you think about as an enterprise company, you have a team of developers. You build projects. You also build applications. Those applications that you can build via OpenStack can run in our cloud. We support the popular applications that you can run, build, and provision. When I get to a point of actually diving into a VM, we get down and we get very granular. Right now, this is some metering that we can see with this particular VM, its I.O., its performance. I can get to the point where I can actually resize this image while it's paused. Uh, there's been some customers that have come to us and said that would be a great feature to have. Uh, we built that early on. This is part of the work that we've done. One of the things, when we're managing all these images, we can get to a point where we understand that we're at a place where I can start seeing all my images here on the right. I'm confirming my resized image right now. And of course, I'm gonna take a snapshot of it because I'm working on a project. And create a snapshot. I can use it at another time to redeploy it. I can also get to a, a position here where I believe, yep, I can get to my console view, what we all actually do our work, our day-to-day -day work, and dive into my machine here, load the console view, SSH into it, and have the ability to work in any environment, whether I'm in any location, in any data center, in any stack that throughout the globe 
or El Muco has a presence. And of course, I can take all my VMs, I can delete them all, I can restart them. It's simple. That's what we've done here, is to take all the feedback from developers and IT departments and make, how do we make a simple solution? We're able to do that very efficiently with a lot of hard work with our development team. And to kind of wrap things up here, that's what makes OpenStack so much fun for us. We've taken the core foundation of all this code and added 13 core services that's proprietary to us. That's what makes this so special. So we're really excited about that. You may want to talk about yeah, sure, sure. one of our so partners. If I like, yeah. so, so important that normally our initial conversation are the table stakes. People want compute and they want storage. But what's important is we can see from the advanced class there are a number of enterprises that are well down this path. And they're running applications of all different sorts through this. We have a mechanism for applications, third-party ISVs, even custom ISVs, to be able to self-customize, be able to put themselves to be consumable by this platform. Now, HPE was an early on strategic partner of ours, and they created, or at least beachheaded, this concept of Cloud 28. It started in Europe. Uh, it's become its own standalone consortium, but it is basically ISVs, partners, uh, third parties, hosters. It originally came together to address data sovereignty. But now it has become this giant beast of companies where you would go and try to find what are the applications for my needs and how do I run them. We have to be one of the charter members and the platform for that, but it's important to note that the applications are constantly coming into that ecosystem because those applications want to be consumed by you, the enterprise, or you, the service provider. The fact that you have a platform that can actually provision and build those and run those, what that means, the simple value prop to that is, if you start with this, even if you just start with simple compute and storage for your employees or for your customers, you still have that insurance policy of all these other values when you're ready to add them. Because I assure you, if you're a managed service provider, you're going to want to start creating bundles that give you a competitive advantage, addressing different applications and so forth. You're going to have clients who are going to say, this is a specific app that I want put in this system. This is all set up for that. And again, that's just kind of a sneak peek into some of the advanced class folks that are using this system. But it's important as you evaluate uh, strategies to deal with this. So we're coming up on two minutes to go. I appreciate uh, you giving us your attention. And again, I would welcome you all. We're right here around the corner. I uh, would welcome you all to uh, come by. We can do a, something more in depth or at a minimum, we can set up a time with you. And again, if you're, uh, if you're interested in seeing it from a, a career standpoint, we would love to have that conversation too. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and attention.